Okay, so how is everyone today? Good? Okay. So today is uh, the 10th. And last time, uh, the place we left off uh, was with, with uh, the following kind of things. We said that, um, for example, 4 times x. 4 times x is actually just a, a convenient way to write what less inconvenient thing. Right, you make, you make, you make a bunch of copies of x and, and add them all up. How many for this? Right, 4. So this would be x plus x <coughs> plus x plus x. And uh, the thing I want you to uh, take away from this, in the first place to know that formula, but in another place this uh, phrase, and that is that dot, that is to say multiplication, is repeated addition. So to multiply means to do, to do additions over and over again. That's what it means. Uh, similarly, <coughs> similarly, we have uh, x and then with exponent 4, something like that. Now, what does that mean? Yeah? Mm -hmm. So now you make four copies of x, and instead of adding them all together, you multiply them all together. <coughs> Okay, now I want to I want to be able to make a a uh, analogous statement to this one. Now, when <coughs> eventually uh, I'll stop writing the dot because I know it's the convention that you learned from uh, from 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 grade school that when you write a four next just right next to an x with nothing in between that means four multiplied by x right by convention. When you, so you don't necessarily have to write the dot to understand that it means multiplication. Uh, but for now, I'm going to write the dot. Uh, so there's, there's two operations in this first sentence. There's uh, dot and plus. Again, there's two operations in this sentence, right? Here's the dots. But then, just like it's the convention to, um, to not write the dots, right? You could, you could, for example, write this. You could write this as 4x without the dot. Uh, this is being written without its symbol also. So the symbol for exponentiation is, does anyone know its name? <laughs> what is it? Carrot. Uh, it is written in this way, that uh, you could write this one like this, x and then caret 4. So that's how you write exponent, and that's how you write its its symbol. So, for example, if you wanted to, with your calculator, say, evaluate 3 to exponent 5, 3 to exponent 5, then in your calculator, what would you have to type? 3 caret 5. Uh, so, for example, in the calculator, in most calculators, including the one that I recommended that you get, uh, notice that it has a caret. That means exponent. So if you wanted to evaluate that in your calculator, you would type it just like that. 3 caret 5. OK. Any question about that? Now, not that I care, but just to help you not make a sort of silly blunder. Uh, I'm saying carrot, and that does not mean the vegetable. Okay, <laughs> it's carrot, spelled C-A-R-A-T, carrot. So it's not, not C-A-R-R-O-T. <laughs> okay, good. So that is to say that just like multiplication is repeated addition, dot is repeated plus, what analogous thing do I write here? Carrot is repeated 
multiplication. Okay, so that's going to be the theme for the rest of today. Is we're going to we're going to uh, try and see all the consequences uh, of this. So, <clears throat> mm, yes. Uh, well, you could say x caret 4, that'd be fine. That'd be a fine way to pronounce it out loud. But usually, uh, colloquially, this would be uh, pronounced as x, uh, either x to the fourth or x to exponent 4. That's the way it's pronounced out loud. But if you like, you can say x caret 4. That'd be fine. As long as you're talking semantics, what about the phrase to the power? That's fine. Where does that come in? It is just arbitrary. I don't know of any reason to call it that. <clears throat> okay, so I don't know of any specific reason. I mean, the reason now is that everyone knows what it means. And it's, it's the same thing as, well, why do we drive on the right side of the road? Well, there's no good reason, uh, except that's what everyone does. <laughs> so it's good, it's good to follow that now. Uh, whereas, like in, uh, in, uh, in Britain and Australia, it's not a good idea to drive on the right side. Right? <laughs> Those are just called frozen accidents of history. Right? Whatever. Uh, fine. I lost my place. Uh, here we go. Remark. Let M and N be in the naturals. And X in the reals. So would someone please remind us what naturals are? The positive integers. Okay, and then, and then the reals are just ev all the numbers, right? None of them are left out. Okay. Okay. So, first thing, we have m multiplied by x plus n multiplied by x. So what should this what should this be? Yes? X common and plus n. Okay. So we could write it uh, in this way. This is m plus n and then multiplied by x. Like so. And this is so important of a rule that it has its own given name. What's its name? Distributive. The distributive property. Okay, so this is called uh, distribution. It's called distribution because if you, if you look at it from the right-hand side uh, and then say, oh, well, here's a group of folks right here, and then we've got this x. And to, to distribute means to allocate, to hand out. So it's like, okay, well, n, you get an x, and m, oh, you get an x too. And if there were other folks in there, they'd get an x. Everybody would get an x. Okay, so distribution. But now let's see why it should be this way instead of some other way. Why, why should it be like this and only like this? Well, for example, uh, 2 multiplied by x plus 3 multiplied by x. Well, this is just like the grade school question uh, in Miss Harris's second grade class when she says, uh, Billy has two apples and uh, Susie has three apples. Altogether, how many apples do they have? Five of them, right? Not a big deal. But let's make sure that it agrees with, with all the things that we've said before. Uh, that is to say, after all, just ignoring all the stuff except just that part, 2 times x is actually a, a compact way to write what? X plus x. x plus x. So that's actually x plus x. And then what's this? X plus x plus x. Right. This one is x plus x plus x. And then, ah, well, we can get rid of the parentheses. x plus x plus x plus x plus x. Why can't we get rid of the parentheses? 
Uh, I agree that it is addition, but there's a specific reason. Yeah? I, I agree that I don't dispute that they're all the same variable, but I'm fishing for an A word. I agree with that. I, the, the operation is the same. It's, they're all adds. But still, there, there's an A word. Starts with A, ends with associative. Ah, associative. <laughs> associative. <laughs> yeah, that one. Associative property. The, the word associate means to make a group. That's what it means. For example, at UTD and at most universities, there's a group called the Association of Former Students, right? People who've graduated from UTD. Just, that just means group. So the fact that here's two groups and we, that are denoted by these parentheses, the fact that you can remove those parentheses, the making and unmaking of groups is called the associative property. Okay, but now, now it's just a counting thing. How many X's are there? You just count. There's five of them. Wouldn't there be, wouldn't it be nice if there was a nice way to, a short way to write that? Oh, there is, right, it's this. Okay, that's why it must be this way and not some other way. Okay, and by analogy, <coughs> x to exponent m multiplied by x to exponent n. What will this be? Yeah? X to the exponent m plus n. Okay, I agree, but let's see why. So for example, x to exponent, uh, say, 2, multiplied by x to exponent 5. And the question is, well, the claim is that we can write this as x to a single exponent. What single exponent? 7. And let's make sure that it's clear why we can do this. So x squared, just ignoring everything except that one, x squared is actually a nice way to write what? x times x. So this would be x times x. And then multiplied by, OK, x to 5. Oh, that's a nice way to write x times x times x times x times x. And then we can remove the parentheses. Why can we do that? Right? So x times x times x times x times x times x times x. So that's, again, the associative property. And then now it's just a matter of counting. How many x's are there? Well, there's seven of them. So x to exponent 7. So what I want you to see is that this is just, is, is exactly the same question as above. It's just counting. This is like saying, oh, well, if uh, Linda has M apples and uh, uh, Douglas <laughs> has N apples, then altogether how many apples are there? M plus N, right? This also is a distribution. <clears throat> it's a distribution. Ah, but we need to be careful, slightly careful, because in, uh, well, let's back up just a hair. So this is a formula that from now on, I take it as given that you've memorized it. And same with this one. So I consider these now to be memorized knowledge. And in this one, in this distribution, what operations are happening? 
Right, addition and multiplication. So this is the distribution of multiplication over addition. That's what it is. What is this one? This is the distribution of what? Mm -hmm. Exponentiation over multiplication. Okay. Can you tell me what, what over means? In, I mean, does that picture a fraction when I see over? Well, uh, the only purpose of the word over is to indicate that there's a direction. So, for ex so that means that you can distribute multiplication over addition, but it makes no sense to say distribute addition over multiplication. Over meaning throughout. Kind of. Yeah, you could write through if you like, just to indicate that there's a specific direction. You can't turn it around. Okay. Good. <clears throat> Let need uh, what? what am I trying to say? I need two naturals now. Let M and N be in the naturals and X in the reals. <clears throat> so in the first place, we will deal with M multiplied by n multiplied by x. So, <clears throat> so this is uh, going to be referred to as iterated multiplication. <clears throat> And in the end, the question is, what we're saying is, OK, take your x, uh, and then first multiply it by n. And then after you've done that, now multiply it by m. And then after you've done that, how many x's will you have? Well, let's see if we can discover the answer. So how about, um, how about for example, 3 multiplied by? 2 multiplied by x. How can we how can we do it? Taking it all the way down to a counting argument. That won't work. So it, it sounded like you said it sounded like you said three times two multiplied by three three times x plus Th this won't work either. I think this. I think this might be the first thing you said. But at any rate, this won't work uh, because what this seems like it would be. It would. It seems like it would be something like distribution. But now here's where the over thingy comes in. What's being distributed over what? Does multiplication distribute over multiplication? No. Multiplication does distribute over some though. If this, was a, if this was a plus, then we could do something like that. But it's not. The distribution thingy only works when it's dot and plus or caret and dot. Not when, it's, not when it's dot and dot. That doesn't work. So this won't work. So if you copied this down, be sure and uh, copy that this was not the, not the right path. OK, well, let's just, let's just go down to uh, to basics, right? Uh, let's just obscure this for a moment. So there's something in there. So it's three times whatever's in there. If there if there were an eight in there, that would mean make make three copies of eight, and then do what? Add them up. Uh, this, um, well, so if there was an eight in there, we'd make three copies of eight. If there were a banana in there, right? Make three bananas and add them all up. So whatever's in there, that's what we've got to do. So, so we make three copies of them and add them all up. And 
And then, well, 2 times x, we know what that is. What is that? That's x plus x. x, plus x. So here's an x plus x. And then another x plus x. And then another x plus x. And now, in, a, in kind of an appeal to your previous knowledge, isn't it the case that we have three groups and that each group contains two items? So this is like the grade school question. Suppose that uh, Pat has three bags and each bag contains two oranges. Then how many oranges do, does Pat have? The product, right? The product of them all. So this would be, uh, there's six X's all together. So what should this be? Mm -hmm. This will be M multiplied by N and then multiplied by X. Interesting. So, so this is another way to see uh, the associative property, right? Because this is a reassociation of this product. Okay. Uh, by analogy, how about uh, this one? X to uh, exponent n to exponent m. So now, in the same way that this one is iterated uh, product, what is this one? Mm -hmm. Iterated caret. <coughs> And the question is, is well, how, how can we simplify this? So just like, just like doing this for this one, we could write that as a single thing times x. We could say, how many x's are there? Well, there's six. My question is, is that my claim is that we can write this as x to some exponent. And the question is, what exponent? Well, again, let's see if we can uh, discover the answer. So how about, um, say, x to exponent 4 to exponent 2. What will we get when we do that? X to the 4th times x to the 4th. Yes, that is true. It will be x to the 4th multiplied by x to the 4th. And then what? So let Right. So x to 4 multiplied by x to 4. Then what? Right. So we can say, oh, well, this actually, that's actually x multiplied by x multiplied by x multiplied by x and then multiplied by x multiplied by x multiplied by x multiplied by x. And now again, this is just exactly the same question that we, answer, that we asked before. Now it's something like, uh, well, uh, suppose that William has two bags and that in each bag there are four giraffes. How many giraffes altogether does William have? Right. Eight of them, right? It's the product. It's the product. So. two groups of four. So what's the answer for this one? So x to n and right. x carrot n. Well, x to uh, m multiplied by n, like so. So what I want you to see is that these formulas, this one and this one, are analogous. The structure of the formulas is exactly the same. The only distinction is whether or not you're iterating dot or you're iterating caret, whether or not you're iterating product or you're iterating exponentiation. So typical, uh, typical example along these lines is something like I could say, I don't know, uh, what's um, t 
10 multiplied by 3x. 10 multiplied by 3 times x. What should it be? 30x. Because that's saying that you have groups of size 3 and you have 10 groups of size 3, so altogether you have 30 items. And similarly, something like, um, <clears throat> I don't know, w to exponent 8 uh, to exponent uh, 4. Right. Then, then the claim is that you can write this as w to a single exponent, and that single exponent is 32, right? Because if you're just if you're just like remembering <coughs> rules, yes. I'm going to ask both ways. Okay. It'll be clear from the instructions. Is this tedious? Oh yeah, it's tedious. Yeah, of course it is. Is that what is going to be required to get credit on that question? Yeah, that's what's going to be required to get credit on that question. Because uh, I understand that it may be the case that in your prior experience in your math classes, you know, they could give you a story and you could write any kind of crazy whatever you want. And if anywhere on the page you wrote 42 and 42 was the numeric result, then okay, teacher gave you credit for that. But that will not be the case in this class. What's being graded is not your final answer. What's being graded is whether or not the process that you go through to get to the final answer is intelligible and clear and neatly written. Good. Also, every time I give a question with a W in it, I like to make sure that one of the <laughs> that there's a three because I just think that looks so funny. <laughs> right? Look at that. <laughs> Three and W. Any question about this? Yes. Unless I'm asking you to do this counting argument, then you'd have to do it like this. But I'd never make it to where there's 32 of them. That'd be too many. Right. I like to top out around like maybe 12. If there starts to get more than 12 W's written down, then it's, it's too many. Okay. <clears throat> now what am I doing? All right. Okay, so this is a remark about inverses. <clears throat> okay, so let X be in the reals. One. The additive additive inverse of X is blank. So what's the additive inverse of X? For example, what's the additive inverse of 5? Additive inverse of 5. What's the opposite of adding 5? Subtracting 5, right? So what's the additive inverse of, of, of 5? Negative 5, right? So what's the additive inverse of x? Negative x. Now here's the thing. You've got to understand why this is the case. Uh, because, by b slash c, I mean because. Uh, because x 
plus negative x is what? Is zero. Now, what's so special about zero with regard to addition? It's the additive identity. So, uh, what's the additive inverse of 7? Negative 7. Negative 7. The reason why 7 and negative 7 are additive inverses is because when you add them, you get the additive identity. Did I stress it hard enough? Okay, so uh, which numbers have um, additive inverses? Do all of them? Positive, Positive numbers have additive inverses? Yes. How about, what's, what's the additive inverse of negative 3? Three, right? Or if you like, negative, negative three, right? <laughs> Which is three. Uh, the reason why those are additive inverses is because when you add negative three and three, you get zero, which is the additive identity. Okay. Integers? Uh, all, all numbers. Uh, well, so for example, pi is a number. It's and, and in particular, it's not an integer. What's the additive inverse of pi? Negative pi. Okay. Uh, does zero have an additive inverse? No. Zero, right? Zero is the additive inverse. Because when you take zero and add zero, you get zero, which is the additive identity. So the additive inverse of zero is zero. All numbers have an additive inverse. And the formula is negation. 2 the multiplicative inverse of x is blank is what So the, ad, the formula for additive inverse is negation. So negative x. One over, one over x. Okay, which is called reciprocal. Now, I agree with that, but why, why is that the case? Because, because one is the multiple. Right. Because when you take these numbers, these, these expressions, x and one over x, and multiply them, x multiplied by 1 over x, what do you get? One. You get 1. And what's so special about 1 in this context? It's the multiplicative identity. So for example, what is the multiplicative identity uh, sorry, what is the multiplicative inverse of two-thirds? Three halves. Because when you take two-thirds and three halves and multiply them, you get one, which is the multiplicative identity. Okay, what's the, what's the multiplicative inverse of four? One-fourth. One-fourth. Uh, what's the multiplicative inverse of negative three negative one-third negative one-third it's got to be neg it's got to be it's got to be a third because you need the threes to cancel it's got to be negative because you need the negatives to cancel right okay now there's a caveat here a thing, a thing that hasn't been said oh here's here's some nice things what's the multiplicative inverse of one one right <laughs> It's its own multiplicative inverse. That's nice. What's the multiplicative inverse of negative 1? Negative 1. Also negative 1. Ah, so negative 1 is also its own multiplicative inverse. That's interesting. Um, fine. Is it the case that every number has a multiplicative inverse? Nothing times 0 is 1. 
and as a result, what? Right. Every non-zero number has a multiplicative inverse. For example, the multiplicative inverse of pi is 1 over pi. But uh, there is no number that you could multiply by 0, and as a result, you would get 1. Right? There is no, there's, no, uh, there's no number z, so that 0 times z is equal to 1. So 0 doesn't have a multiplicative inverse. So uh, the caveat here, the multiplicative inverse of x, when x is not 0, is 1 over x. Good. Any question about this? So for those of you who uh, might go on and do a lot of mathy things, a math instructor can dream. Uh, generally, when you have an operation, you want it to have an identity. So the additive inverse of x is negative x because when you add them, you get the additive identity. And the multiplicative inverse of x is 1 over x because when you multiply them, you get the multiplicative identity. And if you had a different operation, say like banana, then you could say the banana inverse of x is whatever because when you banana them, you get the banana identity. And it just goes on that way. Okay, so for example, Uh, I could say let uh, n be in the naturals and x in the reals. So uh, can someone give us an example natural? Two. Two. Two is natural. How about negative two? Is negative two natural? No. It is not. But it is an integer. Right. But it's, it's not natural, though. Uh, so, that means that if n is natural, negative n is not natural. So we could ask, well, what, what does it mean to do negative n multiplied by x? What does it mean to do that? So, for example, I could ask, well, what is, say, negative 3 multiplied by x? If we were to proceed in the same kind of way as the first page where we did 4 times x and we said uh, 4 times x means make 4 copies of x and add them all up. So negative 3 times x means make x copy. make negative 3 copies of x <laughs> and add them all up. What, what could that possibly mean? <laughs> so the way we're going to define this to make it work for us is we're going to say okay when we write this, actually what we mean, what we actually mean, is that we're going to do n multiplied by negative x. We're going to move that negation over to the x. That's where we're going to move it to. So when we write negative 3 multiplied by x, we interpret that to actually mean what? 3 times negative x. Okay, then, now that, it's a, now that it's a 3, now we can do this, right? We can say, oh, oh, well, that's, uh, that's negative x, and then plus negative x plus negative x. So take the x, find its additive inverse, and then add it to itself three times. Got it. Uh, fine. What about x to negative n? x to exponent negative n. In this case, to give an example, how about x to exponent uh, negative 4? Well, we can't really make negative 4 copies of x <laughs> and multiply them all together, right? That's not going to work. What could that mean? So how are we going to do it? We'll get there eventually, but we've got to do it in little baby steps. So notice that the trick here, the trick here was that we took the negation and we took it away from the natural bit and gave it to the real bit. We, we, we said, okay, negation, you're going to go to, to the x. And because, because this multiplication is repeated addition, the negation went to the x and caused it to be the additive inverse. Well, this is exponent. And exponent, uh, exponentiation is repeated what? 
multiplication. So when we, when we switch the negation to the x, the x isn't going to become negative x, it's going to become what? 1 over x. So what this actually is, is this is 1 over x and then to exponent 4. That's what that means. And then, oh, to that thing to exponent 4, I get it. I'm supposed to make four copies of that and multiply them all together. And then we could do some associations and, and, uh, and um, <coughs> commutations. Uh, that is to say, move some things around. And we could get the following, that this is 1 over x times x times x times x. Ah, but x times x times x times x, that's x to 4. So, what is this? One by x to n. Right. One divided by x to n. So now we can do exponents, uh, even if, if even if the exponent is negative. Okay. Typical example is something like this. Express with positive exponents. So something like, I don't know, x to 5 multiplied by y to negative 3 divided by z to negative 8 uh, multiplied by w to 33. <laughs> so I've given you an expression. Is it the case that all of the individual factors have positive exponents? No, right? So for example, this y has a negative exponent. So how can we fix it? Right. So we could say that this is x to 5, and then z to negative 8 multiplied by w to 33, and then multiplied by y to 3. So we, uh, in exchange for moving the y to the denominator, we were able to negate its exponent so that now it has a positive exponent. Beautiful. Uh, now have we satisfied the instructions? No. no. Right, so OK, fine. We need to do uh, z to 8, x to 5, w to 33, y to 3. Okay, so we did it. So the same trick works in the other direction, right? In exchange for moving the z to the numerator, we were able to negate its, it, uh, its exponent. So any question about this? If I need to go kind of back and rehash the piece above it. This? No, I'm sorry, I'm going back one. This one? No, yeah, I guess either one is fine. The, the explanation of how x to the negative fourth equals 1 over x to the fourth. This? Uh -huh. If I needed to go back and do that, or the one above that, can we go, I mean, we haven't talked about the book much. Like, do you recommend going back and, and reading the text for supplemental? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a, great, it's a great book. Okay. I'm not sure I understand your question, if I, need, if I need help on this, like, can I go back? Yeah, and it's, in the, it's in the book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Fine. So, <clears throat> so we'll just be able to begin this one. We won't be able to finish it, but I'll give you the whole structure of it. So let, uh, suppose that we have one natural, let n be in the naturals, and let and suppose we have two reals. x and y are in the reals. <clears throat> then n multiplied by x plus y. 
What will this be? Yeah? Right. Because this is, again, another example of what D word? Distribution. Distribution, right? And we'll see, we'll see why this is the case uh, next time. But for now, I'll just say that's true. And again, this is distribution. This is distribution of what over what? Mm -hmm. This is distribution of multiplication over addition. <clears throat> OK. I, we don't have enough time to go into an example of why it should be that way and not some other way. How about this one? x multiplied by y to exponent n. What should this be? Yes. This will be x to exponent n multiplied by y to exponent n. This is, again, a distribution. Because look, just like this is a, this, we've got this group of folks in here. And O, X, you get an N, and Y, you get an N. All of y'all get an N, right? Distribution. Notice that it's working exactly the same way here, right? We've got this N outside of the group, and here's the group inside. X, you get an N, Y, you get an N. So this is distribution of what over what? Right, of caret over dot. So here's the, the warning, and this is the place where students uh, can go uh, quite wrong, quite off the rails. In today's lecture, we've talked about three operations. We talked about add, multiply, and caret. Exponentiation, right? There is a distribution rule concerning these two. Add and multiply. <coughs> and there is a distribution rule concerning these two. But there is not a distribution rule concerning the first one and the last one. So to be clear, 30 more seconds. If we do something like. Uh, 3 multiplied by z plus w. Do we know a distribution rule for this? Yes. Yeah, because that's one's product in sum. So that would be 3 multiplied by z plus 3 multiplied by w. That works because that's a distribution of product over sum. How about, how about uh, say a multiplied by b to exponent 4. Do we know a distribution rule for this one? We do. So it would give you a to exponent 4 multiplied by b to exponent 4. That works because that's distribution of caret over dot. Here's the place where students go wrong. Something like this x plus y to exponent 8. What two operations are occurring in this expression? Distribution and caret. Right, caret and plus. Do we know a distribution rule for caret and plus? We do not. So I'm going to write something, but it is incorrect. So if, you're, if you are about to copy what I'm about to write, please, please, please write down that it is incorrect. This is what students do that's incorrect. They'll write, oh, it looks just like the other ones. Uh, x to exponent 8 plus y to exponent h. So this is wrong. It makes the greater so sad. And it's wrong because there is no distribution of caret over sum. There's no way to do it. Uh, there's no distribution formula to do it. You can do this, but it is a long and drawn out process. 
which we will discuss in the coming lectures. So have a nice uh, Wednesday.